Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture 3.3. We're going to use a color to grayscale image processing example to illustrate the CUDA parallelism model. The objective of this lecture is for students to gain deeper understanding of multidimensional grid kernel configurations through a real world use case. This slide shows the RGB uh, representation of color images. In an RGB representation, each color in a color image is represented with a R value, a G value, and a B value. And um, you can think about uh, these values as the intensity of red, green, and blue uh, in gen when generating each uh, pixel. Uh, when we use a uh, RGB representation, we can think about the representation as a linear combination of R, B, and uh, G, and B uh, in generating pixels. So uh, we can actually think about um, the information as uh, one, a uh, the total intensity of the pixel, and two, a uh, distribution of the intensity among R, G, and B. So therefore, if we take out the total intensity, we can think about um, the, each pixel as a uh, linear combination of uh, percentages assigned to each col uh, primary color R, red, blue, and green. So this leads to the uh, bottom picture, where we show that uh, 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 each representation forms a triangle of possible linear combinations of the red, blue, and green in the color space. There are multiple uh, different ways for uh, representing RGB, and work, uh, this particular picture shows the, uh, the triangle of possible uh, representations or possible colors that can be represented with the Adobe RGB color space. If we use a RGB representation, each pixel will typically be uh, represented with an unsigned combination of three unsigned characters. Each one gives 256 uh, uh, intensity levels for one of the primary colors. So in the uh, top picture, we, sh uh, we show that the, uh, we can think about the representation of uh, each row of pixels as the RGB uh, three characters uh, of representation for the first pixel, and then RGB three unsigned character representation of the second pixel. And this will become important when we uh, present the kernel of uh, RGB to gray conversion. This slide shows the concept of RGB to grayscale conversion. A grayscale uh, digital image is an image which where uh, the value of each color only carries the intensity information. So we can think about uh, a RGB to grayscale com uh, uh, conversion as taking out the percentage assignment of each uh, primary color and only focus on the intensity of the, uh, the image. And in many applications, uh, we only care about the in, uh, intensity of the image. For example, in many um, uh, medical imaging applications, the color is actually meaningless. So we would like to be able to focus on the intensity of the image at a particular uh, frequency, uh, light frequency. So uh, a great uh, color, uh, a great scale image allows us to focus on that intensity. The particular formula that we're going to use for converting RGB uh, representation to, uh, to grayscale is uh, based on the, uh, a particular uh, color space. So uh, uh, notice that um, if you use a different color space, you could uh, uh, end up with different coefficients. So basically what we're uh, doing is we're going to take 
the RGB values of uh, a color image and um, uh, use each one to contribute to the total intensity of the grayscale image. So in this particular um, use case, uh, we're going to assign 21% of the intensity to the R value, 71% uh, of the intensity to the G value, and 7% uh, of the intensity to the B value. And uh, you can think about this as a dot product of uh, the RGB uh, vec uh, uh, vector with the uh, 0 0.21, 0 0.71, and 0 0.07 vector um, so that uh, we can produce a single intensity value as shown in the bottom of the slide. Now we're ready to discuss the RGB to grayscale conversion kernel code. We're going to use this kernel and um, have every thread in uh, executing the kernel to process one uh, pixel of the RGB image and generate one pixel of the grayscale. And recall that uh, for the input RGB image, we're going to have three channels, meaning that uh, we're going to have the R GB unsigned character numbers uh, that are uh, would be used to represent each pixel. So um, in C, we still will have the linearized uh, RGB array, and um, uh, it's going to be a array of unsigned characters. It's just that every three characters in the uns uh, uh, in this linearized array will be used to represent one single pixel and this is going to be important in the calculation of the index into this array um, on the other hand the output gray image is going to be uh, also an unsigned character but only one unsigned character will be used in uh, representing each pixel when we entered the, uh, the kernel, every thread will still be calculating a logical uh, row and column index into the uh, image. So we're going to have the x and y uh, calculated. Essentially, the, uh, the x index is the column index, and the y index is the row index that we showed in, the, um, in lecture 3.2. And um, these logical uh, in indices are going to be tested against the width and the height of the picture to decide whether each particular thread should participate in the uh, calculation, just as we have seen in the previous example. For those threads that will be participating in the uh, computation, uh, there are two actual uh, indices that need to be calculated based on these logical uh, indices. The first one is a gray offset. Remember, in a gray uh, uh, representation or gray image, uh, we're going to have a uh, one unsigned character for each pixel. So all we need to do to calculate the index into that uh, array is by multiplying the logic, uh, the uh, the vertical index y, with the uh, width, with the number of pixels per uh, row, and then uh, add the column index x. So this gives us the gray offset. However, um, when we uh, calculate the uh, index into the RGB image, we need to remember that uh, every three unsigned character represents a pixel. So the uh, the same offset that we calculate linearized offset that we calculated for the gray offset can be used to derive the RGB offset by multiplying three, which is the uh, uh, the value of the channels in this piece of code. So um, in what the in the header file we would have de uh, defined the uh, the constant channels as a value three. So uh, once we calculated the RGB uh, offset, we can use the, uh, the RGB offset to access the R value, G value, and B value of the, uh, of the pixel that the uh, current thread is responsible for with 
the uh, three statements that we have we show in the picture where we uh, use just RGB offset value to access the R value and then um, the RGB offset value plus one to access the G value and RGB uh, val offset plus two to access the B uh, uh, value. So the, this gives us the three uh, values that we need to combine into a uh, great pixel value for the current pixel. Once we have the RGB value, we can uh, multiply uh, and the coefficients and add the sum together, and this gives us the gray image pixel value. And now we can use the gray image offset to uh, write into the gray image. So this completes the kernel. And as we can see, uh, in a in a real world use case like this, even though uh, there is a little bit complexity in terms of the amount of information that we need to uh, account for in each pixel, and when we do the conversion, we would have different offset calculation. But by and large, um, the uh, the logical represent uh, calculation of the coordinate of the pixels is uh, the same as what we showed in uh, the simpler example in uh, lecture 3.2 and then uh, uh, in, in, by and large um, the uh, calculation of the uh, in, of the values may be a little bit more complex but um, uh, once you understand the principles behind the two-dimensional uh, grid configuration and how we can map the thread indices and block indices into uh, data indices in these multidimensional configurations, um, you should be able to uh, use the, these principles on fairly complex real-world uh, uh, use cases. This completes Lecture 3.3. Thank you.